Court. Welcome. So, astrology. Oh, welcome. I'm really excited about this because in my connection to astrology, it was a slow connection. But when it's when it connected with me, it was like, oh my God. And to me, it is something I like to tap into every day. And so let's get started. Um so you might want a pen and paper. And have any, and I do have to chat up. So first off, have any of you gotten your astrology reports done? Put it in the chat. I'd be interested to know. Uh. Awesome. Well, I'll have to see. I don't think anybody in the class has their astrology report done with me. Okay. Well, maybe that's what I'll do for a bonus. You'll all get a, a, a little astrology report from me. Okay, we'll do that. All these no's. <sighs> I love it. I love newbies. Okay. So one of the reasons why I like astrology is because when I connected to it, I realized one thing. First, I realized, okay, so I'm a Libra. <laughs> I like balance. <sighs> so I realized that the character traits of my birthday and my horoscope sign were able for me, I'm trying to put this into words, where it was able for me to take a look at, you know, the influences and, and the natural powers and connections that I was born with, those traits, those characteristics. But I also learned what was not. Okay. And, you know, there's, there is a universal connection that happens to people that are influenced in the same sign. Okay. So when I realized, oh, it was like an enlightening thing for me. You guys are probably like, yeah, whatever. But for me, it was enlightening. I was like, oh my God, this is all me. The character traits that I was born with. But then I got to see the aspect of me that was authentically my own. Right. And sometimes it's like, whoa, did I really? There's negative aspects and there's positive aspects. And we're all going to be experiencing them with different cycles in our life. So I loved it because some of the spiritual things that I was able to tap into were actually easier than I thought because of my horoscope sign. Right. And then there was others that my abilities were self-created and weren't part of my sign. So as far as astrology, I found a really strong personal connection to it. And that's what I love about it. So get ready to learn about yourself. And my goal is for you to be able to do your chart, but also do someone else's chart. Astrology is like a lifelong connection right so astrology has been regarded as a different thing to different people and certain individuals view it as the future's prediction so we can predict with it while some see astrology as the guide to daily life encounters and energies both for me <laughs> Regardless of the situation, this is considered as an observable, observable fact, providing insights to a realm of life through a more unique and more creative level. So it gives a good understanding of our existence in the world, of people's existence in the world. 
I think it's pretty interesting. So the meanings and the symbols in astrology define the entire energetic abilities of a person to succeed and thrive. So people have heard of blueprints, maybe, but you can do a, a soul blueprint. Well, it's basically this, right? And so because we are born into certain signs and planetary influences, those have to do with like our essence, our unique abilities, our demigod, right? Energies. So one of the reasons why we like to delve into astrology is so that we can succeed and thrive. And this is actually one of the main magnitudes is to give us information and inspiration. And it doesn't mean that we should be observant in like a religious way. It just means that the essence of astrology it has various ways where we can use it in our lives, where we can tap into it. And, you know, I firmly believe that the things that I manifest and the things that I want are not me. <laughs> like, I wish I could take credit for the things that I am happy about my life, but I know it's because I tap into influences. So let's go into the basics of astrology. So the very first step is, is learning the basic science of astrology. It is the month, okay? The month that you were born in, which can give an overview of your dislikes, your likes, and your entire personality that was influential to your spirit, right? The power of your spirit. So astrology can be perceived in many, many various ways. The planets that continue to revolve around, they play an important role in the influence of astrology. The astrological mystery and beauty can be a proof that this is in constant motion. So basically, astrology is composed of your horoscope sign, the 12 zodiacs, and each represents the month of the calendar year. But they are portraying the definite symbol of each individual personality so if you like if you find people are interesting this you'll love because you can actually figure it different things out right so horoscopes give the unique ability for us to fulfill our desires it gives us clarity it gives there she is <laughs> It gives us clarity and opportunity to our lives. In addition, we are generating awareness. And that's what it is. We're living a life in a different level of awareness. And it's the awareness of us, ourselves, as a person, but also on a spiritual level. So when you understand your astrology and your horoscope and the powers that you were born into or your children, right? We can better understand, but also tap into those influences to enhance and develop, right? So astrology can teach us the ways to enhance and develop, to be happy and to be you know, a content individual, whatever our wholeness is. Astrology also recommends the kind of careers and jobs that can encourage our development and growth as a person using our unique skills and gifts. And this can be very simple or it can be complicated to understand depending on how 
you as an individual connect to it and take it. So the most essential thing here is to be informed of the knowledge and the opportunity that the astrological has. And I want you to look at this astrological influence that we're talking about as a sphere, a globe, okay, a universal globe. <laughs> and don't worry, everyone's going to get a replay of this, so you don't have to try to remember everything, okay? So welcome. So this everlasting energy has infinite answers, but some people would say there's no infinite answers. Either way, <laughs> astrology has daily facts that can be learned as a brand new thing. And this is a really highly skilled practice, but once you learn it, you'll never lose the knowledge. The knowledge will become a part of a power and you'll be able to feel like a connection. You'll feel fully more committed because you'll have that understanding. So the astrological concepts, so the astrological concepts make many people in the world interested but also curious on how they really work on their lives. And the basic knowledge about astrology can give a significant change in how a person views life and their daily encounters. So have you ever, okay, so I know that a lot of you didn't, haven't had a report yet, but you will. <laughs> now to get started, how many of you read your horoscopes? Do you have a habit of reading your horoscopes or when you're in the coffee shop and they have the placemat or in the paper? So if you, you used to, but haven't in a while. Okay, definitely, yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> and some of you may have realized that, oh, you have an app. I want an app, <laughs> that's cool. But some of you may have realized that it connects with you on some days. Like, it's like, wow, right? And some of you will realize, wow, it actually does give me some insight on my day. It prepares me if there's something that I need to like be aware of <laughs> or what I need to go for. So to get started, let's take a look at a couple different details um, so that we can get into it. So the knowledge about astrology actually started thousands of years ago. The concept about it came from different cities and different countries where each of them contributed to an overall perception of the whole people. And this was based on their present generation, remember. So a lot of the information is ancient. But astrology is, uh, I mean, Steph, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. I want to talk faster than it's coming out. <laughs> okay. Sometimes that's a work hap. Okay, so astrology is composed, this is where I get excited, of various divination systems. Astrology is truly divination it's like reading the cards or you know looking at the stars and this divination system has to do with the premise about human world events and astronomical phenomena our relationships and several cultures integrated all of this astronomical energy in their cultures like the Chinese, the Mayans, the Indians, they all created elaborate systems in prediction of terrestrial events coming through celestial observations. 
And they looked at the sky like they were celestial, like higher world spirits and angels and gods. And in some of the Western countries, astrology is usually com comprised and added with the horoscope system that explains the aspects of the personality of a person. But at the same time, it predicts future events according to the positions of the moon, the sun, and planetary objects during your birth. So it's all based on you. It really is. Like, that's incredible. Like, what an incredible system it was created thousands of years ago. In ancient Babylonia, astrology was practiced by priests for deciphering the God's will. And then from there, the Greeks adopted it and they relied on the oracles and the stars to forecast events in the future. Oh, gives me goosebumps. I know I was from that time. <laughs> well, I kind of feel like it tonight. I look Greek. Okay, so the, the Indian Hindus explored it from 5,000 BC. So 5,000 BC to 3,000 BC. And they developed similar signs that people are now using today. The Egyptians, they were the ones that used astrology for the first time in foretelling the person's character according to his or her birthday. The Egyptians were. And way back in 4300 BC in Egypt, the star charts were discovered. And the Chinese developed the astrology system in their culture in 2800 BC. And Greeks had influenced the astrology of the Egyptians through what they learned from the Babylonians. <laughs> On the other hand, there was lots of astrology in the ancient worlds. And a lot of it contains what we use in our present day practices which represent houses, signs, and planets. So astrology became an essential aspect to various ancient people and different cultures. Um, what was that? Augustus. Augustus, the Roman ruler. He actually created coins that had Capricorn his astrological zodiac sign on it. And then later on, the Persians and the Arabs followed the astrology teachings, including other sciences such as medicine and mathematics of the Greek. And these practices have been shared with Europeans during the 12th century. And that actually paved the way for Renaissance. And most Muslim and Persian astronomers refuted this concern for religious and sci scientific reasons. So then astrology started to decline in its uh, popularity after the fall of Rome. Christians claimed that it was the devil's work. As church had grown in power, these people that had taken up the astrology practice for personal uses. For instance, St. Thomas Aquinas believed the planets are controlling all things. And during the Renaissance period, astrology became favorable again. And then in the 17th century, it became the age of enlightenment where it started to hold scientific accomplishments. So for the very first time, astrology turned into two distinct disciplines. It remained in the background until the interest was revived. 
But during the early 20th century, in 1930 s U.S. came up with a famous astrology program that aired on the radio. And it eventually made a spark and it started to re interest the people. And now it's like an international thing. It's an international leader to like consult the stars. You have to consult the stars. But some people don't really understand or they'll refuse to believe in predictions, even though they're taking. These a, a horoscope seriously or non seriously. But for many people, astrology was seen as a language. And this language is used to describe the to describe the energy patterns of the universe. So think about astrology. As a language for describing the energies of the universe. While some will use it as a planet observation that creates energy patterns at the given moment. Early cultures, they closely followed the movements and they observed the annual journey of the sun through the zodiac. Then they saw that some individuals who were conceived under the signs of the sun had the same traits. How cool is that? So, astrology works with constellation energy in the outer space, right? And the light, okay, the light, think about that. Coming from the constellation or the astrology sign is flying towards outer space, right? Light, light is a beam. <laughs> okay. Well, the light coming from the constellation is flying towards the outer space. It strikes the sun's energy and it mixes with the light and then it hits the earth. How cool is that? So, the astrology, the constellation that you were born with, hitting the sun's light and striking the earth. <laughs> I love it. So, those who were born, let's say, for those who were born between the planet Earth and the sign of Pisces, the constellation. Means that Pisces, Pisces is the astrological sign. So let's go into some sun signs, the zodiac signs, and the strengths and the weaknesses. And there's only 12. Okay. So there are 12 various sun signs. And this is also present according to Chinese astrology. But they have been assigned according to a zodiac sign where the sun is located during the birth of a person. Okay. So the zodiac sign is where the sun was located during the birth of a person. And these signs give details regarding the individual's unique. Personality. Now think about that though. Take it further because every second, every minute, and every hour has a different influence, right? So it's not just like that day. <laughs> every single minute and everything is different. So this represents their unique personality. And so we're going to go into the zodiac signs and the basics. Of, their, uh, of the personality types and the emotions. So this is just like the first little bit of general. This is like, there's so much more. So let's just see. So Aries is known if the person is born between March 21st and April 30th. That's where we are today. 
in that, and its symbol is ram. Well, the fire is its element. Aries, ruling planet, is Mars. Okay, so that was a ruling planet. Now, the key strengths of an Aries person is energetic, confident, adventurous, courageous. There are negative aspects, and these are just a little generalized, is being impatient, can be a little self-centered and impulsive and short-tempered, <laughs> right? But if you're an Aries and you just heard that, you're like, yeah, well, that is me. See, it ain't your fault. That's a power, <laughs> right? You can't blame your sign. <laughs> I'm not going to start that now. <laughs> Universe will give me shit for that. So let's go into Taurus. So Taurus is a person who's born between April 21st and May 21st. And the sign symbol to soar, or the assigned symbol to Taurus is the bull, while its ruling planet is a Venus, and Earth is the element. So sacred circle people, right? Earth element, right? You're meant to be rich and healthy, right? And connected to the land. So Taurus is a bull. Earth element and the planet is Venus. I can't wait to get, we'll get into the planets. So the strengths are emotional and physical strengths. They're compassionate, reliable, they're loyal, they're dependable, but their weaknesses. I just feel bad talking about the weakness, but here it is aggressiveness. Hates to face changes can be so stubborn <laughs> and sensitive. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Gemini. So Gemini people are born between May 22nd and June 21st. And this is the symbol of the twins. And what I like about that is a lot of Geminis, they got a lot going on right? It's like hearing their, their good and their bad all day long, right? Well, it's normal. So their symbol is the twins and their ruling planet is Mercury. Their element is air. So they're meant to be able to get that direction about the future. So Gemini strengths are, they're inquisitive. They're very flexible, right? Because there's two of them. <laughs> Um, they have good communication skills. Uh, they like to be a leader, but their weaknesses, they can be relentless, like re restless. Their time management, when really, when they're inspired, their time management is like awesome. And selfishness. And when they go into a negative quality, their, their personality can get confusing. Other people get confused about their personality and they're confused about their own personality. Cancers. So cancers are the people who are born between June 22nd and July 33rd. 33rd. What? July 23rd. So crab is the symbol. The water is the element and the moon is its ruling planet. So cancers like moon magic. <sighs> so the strengths of the sign include their uh, mediumship abilities, right? Genuine family attachment and they're loyal. And they're, they help people make changes. So their adaptability. But their weaknesses are sensitivity, mainly indecisiveness, 
and emotional outbursts or moodiness. Leos, I mean, like I know somebody of each one of these. So every time I talk about the signs or I speak about the person, so I don't mean to giggle, I'm not giggling, but it's just because I'm thinking of the people that are those signs. So Leo are people who are born between July 24th and August 23rd. And their symbol is the lion. The sun is their ruling planet. So daytime energy and the things that they want to acquire in the day and fire is their element. So their strengths are honesty, optimistic. They have a natural energetic nature. They're loyal and they're big heartedness. But their weakness, <laughs> oh, their weakness is egotism right? They fall into the ego. So they listen to it and it's hard for them to escape it. So whether it's doubt, fear, judgment, you know, like they'll get in that dominating energy and jealousy is a weakness for them big time. They get triggered by it, whether it's them or someone else. Same with possessiveness. Virgos. So Virgos are people who were born between August 24th and September 23rd. And there is virgin, the virgin is their symbol. Earth is their element and Mercury is its ruling planet. So Virgo strengths are realistic. They're dependable, they're patient, they're perfectionists <laughs> they're practical but their weaknesses restlessness and they're too critical sometimes and they think too hard and too long and they lack demonstrativeness those are the weaknesses not too bad actually Okay, Libra's next, so good to tell you about myself. So Libra's persons are born between September 24th and October 23rd. And balance is our symbol. And Venus is the ruling planet. Air is the element, so future again. And Libra's strengths are being affectionate and loving. Um, they have a social nature. They're patient, of course, the balance, right? And they have a cheerful, energetic energy. Their weaknesses include indulgence, oversensitivity, emotional carelessness, and indecision. And of course, being off balance, right? So this is really bad. Okay, Scorpios. <laughs> so are people popping into your minds as you're listening to this? And do you realize maybe some of you, like my brother, my brother, there, there's like, they're a family of five and four of them are Pisces. <laughs> I'm always like feeling sorry for the one that's an Aquarius. <laughs> Uh, so you might be surrounded by certain signs, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, Scorpio, did I do that? No, I sure didn't. So Scorpios born between October 22nd and November 21st. And their son, son or their sign is the Scorpio as their symbol. Water is their element. And Pluto is the ruling planet. So their strengths are trustworthiness, patience, they're caring, mystifying, they're loyal, and they're passionate. But their weaknesses are, are very strong. So when they get into their weak energy, they become too sensitive, too stubborn, egotistical, and they are, they do get jealous easily. 
So that's one of their triggers as well, the jealousy. Okay, Sagittarius. So a Sagittarius person is born between November 23rd and December 21st. And the fire is the element. The archer uh, is the symbol. And the ruling planet is Jupiter. So money should be easy for them. Money and good energy. Their strengths are lightheartedness, excellent communication skills, intellectual. So they have that intellectual mind. So they click with things. Um, and they're very honest. But they're forthright. That's what I love about them. I have a few of those in my life. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Well, there you go, right? Forthright. <laughs> but the weaknesses, oh, you should have told me. <laughs> the weaknesses include restlessness, flirtatious nature. So whether it's your own or falling for it, right? changes and having a sharp tongue right out <laughs> good i'm glad it fits <laughs> so capricorn so that's why like and once you once we get into it you'll see like which signs are really good with others and which aren't and that's why a lot of dating sites will be like well what's your horoscope sign because they base personality off of these planetary influences <laughs> so capricorn the capricorn person was born december 22nd and january 20th and it's a sea goat so it's like a mermaid half mer mermaid tail with the goat on it i love that so capricorn's element is earth money and saturn is the ruling planet and the strength, the strengths of them, they're reliable, they're sincere, they're loyal, they're hardworking, but honestly, they have very strong willpower. Okay, so I find that a lot of Capricorns, they gotta use their willpower in life, but they also have that gift to be responsible, but their weaknesses, short-tempered. <laughs> and introverted so a lot of times they have to pull themselves out because they'll get too hermitized and they don't like any slight obstacles okay the aquarius so people born january 21st and february 19th have the aquarius sign and they're the water barriers or bearer and their sign it, or that's their sign, but their element is air and their ruling planet of Uranus. And their strengths include being kind, they're intelligent, they're friendly, they're practical, they're compassionate, like very stabilizing energy. But their weaknesses are unpredictable. So they're usually stable until they're like, in a negative trait, then all of a sudden they'll become unpredictable and they dislike making commitments. So it's hard to get them to do things <laughs> when they're in their negative trait. And they're like very adamant about things. They know how to hold their ground, that's for sure. So the Pisces. Pisces people are born between February 20th and March 20th. And so the fish is the sign. The water is the element. And Neptune is the ruling planet. So Pisces strengths are like sharp memory. So like they could have memories like super young. Um, they, dis they have a disinterest in material things. And they're very intuitive, but they also, also have mediumship abilities, so they're feelers. And their weakness is being inflexible, or they're too sensitive, or mood swings, okay? 
So those are the Pisces. So now let's get into, and that's pretty interesting. The other thing I wanted to say, there was something else I wanted to say before I go on about that. Okay. So once you understand these horoscope signs that we went into, you'll also understand more of the energies for each month. But not only are these the energies of each month taking place every single year, but the people in that month. So if you're a Pisces and it's February 20th to March 20th, you are in power. So when it's Libra time, I'm like doing as much as I can. Like that's my magic time. You know, we always feel good on our birthday sometimes, but sometimes we don't feel much. But that planet is our ruling planet. That's our portal of power. So every month of my birthday, I like to tap into all of those planetary energies by focusing on how and what I want from them that month. And so we're going to get, so it's pretty interesting. So the other thing is, the zodiac sign that the, they have houses. <laughs> okay. So a birth chart is composed of 12 pieces. So let me see if I here I have. So see that plain wheel? Okay. Each one of these is a house, okay? So, and I'm gonna give you a little thing. So don't worry, you'll see it. So it looks like that. And this birth chart has 12 pieces. So each one of these represent a life experience. A life experience in each one of these arenas, okay? And the planet zodiac sign shows its way. And it, it shows the way it's been directed. So it creates a map, right? So each one of these, so say this is a Libra, and then we have Scorpio and Sagittarius, right? So each one of these houses represents a horoscope sign. So the planet zodiac sign shows its way as it's being directed. And then the planet's house placement shows the real life on how it plays out. So it's kind of hard to see a blank thing and understand that. So I'm just gonna take it a little further. So what are the houses? So just remember each one of these represents a zodiac sign. And each one of these also represent a house. So within the circle, you'll see the circle, okay? So the first house, okay, let me just wait. Let me get this right. The house of Mars. So the house of Mars and Aries, okay? And you, you might wanna write that down. So how, house number one, Mars and Aries. So, this first house represents all essential ascendant rising sun. So this represents all essential assign, ascendant rising sun and the world's first impression. Okay. And you might not understand all of that yet, but you will in the end, okay? So the second house is the house of Venus and Taurus. Okay, so in the wheel, the second house is Venus and Taurus. And the second house is the house of resourcefulness. So it represents steady and slow progress and stability, okay? So that's where we wanna see 
what is stabilizing and it's like the slow and steady one the foundational right i always see that as like the ancestral power now the house number three is the house of mercury and gemini and that house is the house of the family tribe okay so it represents family our neighbors our short travels as well as education so education and learning okay that was we're on number three. So number four, <laughs> my mind's turning into mush. Okay, number four. So the house of the moon. So house of moon and cancer. So this, the fourth house is my favorite. And I already kind of said the ancestral, but it is actually the house of ancestral roots. Mm -hmm. So all of our power, when we're doing our magic and calling in the power of our ancestors, that's when the third house or the fourth house is its most powerful. That's when we do it. So whenever you'll see, oh my gosh, I can tap into this energy. So the fourth house also represents mother. So mother healing, mother connecting. If your mother's passed, you can connect with her, right? So mother energy, as well as this sense of home. But one thing that I like to do, I don't know, I'm going to tell you this, but when I need to work with the unconscious or somebody else's unconscious, <laughs> I do it during the fourth house. So the fourth house, the house of the moon in cancer, we can actually influence people by communicating with their spirit. Okay. So, and family, of course. So the house of moon in cancer, family, mom, home, unconscious, and ancestors. <laughs> okay. The fifth house. And you can't like all houses. You can't like one house over the other. It's not allowed. I tried that. <laughs> okay so the fifth house and these are all once you understand oh i can tap into this house then you know your money your money magic is going to be more effective your love magic so the fifth house is the house of the sun and leo and it represents love affairs so anything that has to do with love, right? Relationships, love affairs, love spells. It also has to do with children. So that house, the fifth house is related to children, inner child, self-expression, but also loving life. So if you're not loving life, that's the house you want to tap into that energy. And you're like, how do I do that? Well, every single hour of the day has a different planet. You'll, they'll all combine. It's a whole matrix. Okay, so we're at the sixth house, the house of Chiron or Mercury and Virgo. So Chiron is C H I. R O N, that's what it's called. And that is the sixth house. And this is the house of service. Okay. So better described as the uh, uh, house of service routine. So it means our fulfillment and healthy life. So we are meant to all be fulfilled and live a happy life. This is also the house of diet, <laughs> daily work and exercise. So that's the hour you wanna do your exercise. 
There's actually a two hours of it during through the day. So house of Venus is next. And that is the seventh house, the house of Libra, house of Venus and Libra. And that is the house of style. <laughs> it actually is. So if you need ideas on like anything you're changing or creating or painting, right? That is the house to do it in. Uh, it also represents major relationships including business relationships, friendships, and marriage. So these major relationships under the seventh house have lessons of destiny. So major lessons. The house of Pluto and Scorpio is the eighth house. And that represents the regeneration of sex, mm -hmm. as well as personal rebirth and periods of death. And that can include cycles of death that are in life, like topics, right? Death and rebirth but it can also represent periods of death where people go into the spirit world. So the eighth house is a time where lots of people do pass, but it's also the time where you might want to light a candle. If you need some regeneration in the sexual energy, that's for guys and girls and all the other things I don't understand anymore as well as personal death and rebirth. So if you want to trigger a rebirth in your period, if I'm living my life and it's, I think it sucks. <laughs> I will, I like, it sucks. I change my path right away. I ain't gonna live a sucky path. I call for the forces, <laughs> help me, I'm dumb. I can't figure it out. <laughs> and, you know, you can. This is a time where you wanna get your answers. Let's go to the ninth house. So the ninth house, the house of Jupiter and Sagittarius, represents seeking knowledge, exploring, so, as well as traveling and higher education. So that's a, kind of a, like a house of mastery almost. The 10th house is the house of Saturn and Capricorn. And that represents the arena or the house of career and ambitions, as well as personal authority and control. <laughs> so if you're out of control, that's the time you're gonna wanna light your candle. The house of Uranus and Aquarius is the 11th house. And that represents the house of networks, of collective energies. So if you're a writer and you want to tap into the collective, that's a good time, as well as friendships, right? So the 11th house will bring people into our life if it is destined. The 12th house, is the house of Neptune and Pisces. And it is, this is one of my favorites, the house of hidden realities. That means like unseen, but you can sometimes just like grab one of those threads and get the vision and it's wicked. So house of unhidden realities that include supernatural things, spirit, like things you never understand, but learn to is wicked. So I want to go into, wow, I'm doing pretty good here. I want to, <laughs> I want to go into the characteristics of the different zodiac signs. So we're going to go more into that. Let me take another step. If you have. Anybody have, is everyone following so far? I hope you're not falling asleep. Uh, 
personally, I feel like astrology is like, to me, psychological magic, right? And people that know me, they know, like, I don't even ask people their sign. Some people will be like, what's your horoscope sign? Or what's, what's your sign before they start readings? I don't even have to. I can tell, I can feel it. When you, and that's the thing is the more people you meet, the more you'll feel and understand their energy, right? Good, I'm glad you like this. All right, so let's get into this. So many people across the globe find it more interesting and more interesting when they read the zodiac sign characteristics. And most of the time, they eventually compare it to see if they have the same personality with a statement that's indicated in their sign, right? We kind of spoke of that earlier. But to have a better and clearer, or to have better and clearer information about the zodiac sign meanings or can characteristics, we have to move on. So let's go into the characteristics now. So the ram, Aries, remember? Let's go into the ram. So Aries demonstrates energy that provides a vibrant and exciting impression. Their optimism and enthusiasm make them naturally born leaders. And they have like this irresistible spark about them. So their zones are the face and the head. That's where their place of power is. Okay. So the face and the head. So throat chakra up. And their birth stone is the diamond, I believe. Yeah, Aries, the diamond is their birth stone. The bull is Taurus. And their qualities of being patient, persevering, and dependable lead to success in obtaining their dreams. And their determination and strength are meant to inspire other people to invest trust in them. Their places of power, the throat and neck. So expression, throat chakra power is their power place. And emerald is actually the birth stone. And there is other stones out there. But they love to have a good life and they want the comforts of a good life. And they have a very strong desire to create their own security. And they do. So the twins, the Gemini. So Gemini people have to share and communicate their ideas. They can't hold things inside and they shouldn't. And they're also curious about everything, <laughs> I think. Whatever it is that draws to them, they connect with it. And I think it's that exciting, romantic side of them. Like they have this intriguing energy that gets their imagination going. So they do have to always have a focus and a drive. But their areas are the shoulders and the arms and the hands. So these areas that I'm speaking about, they're places of power. If they're blocked or if they're being influenced by negativity, they could become quite painful as well. Like maybe you'll get this tight throat in here and it's like, oh my God, I just need to massage this. Or if you're a Gemini, maybe your arms and shoulders, right? Or your hands, right? They always get sore. And well, and agate is their birthstone. Wow, there you go. Gemini, okay, so if it's shoulder, and that's interesting. So what I would do is get him to wear an agate. 
wear, get his birthstone, any type of agate to wear like as a necklace because it's right in between the shoulders and see how that helps him. Oh, he just got a moss agate off oh, from my shop. I like him. <laughs> Good, he needs to wear that or put it by his bed or in his pillowcase even. Wow, interesting, crazy. So Cancer, the crab. I love crabs. So uh, I should have said, I like sea crabs. <laughs> oh, really? So you too, shoulder issue, right? Oh my gosh. So again, Lorraine, you're gonna have to carry an agate, wear one. So cancer people are always willing to give emotional nurturing through that mothering energy to those who are in need. Okay, well, let's see. So your zone is the stomach and up into the chest. So stomach all the way up to the, like, oh, just above the breasts. That's your zone, digestive. And pearl is your birthstone. So pearl is a good thing to wear. There's something else that I like cancers to wear. Hmm, I'm gonna have to think about that later. Well, we'll be talking a lot more about medicines and stuff that we can do for, the, for our signs and things too. But digestive and chest area. So you might even feel like maybe glands that get sore or Maybe you have to not wear a bra or take off a bra. <laughs> so that is your area, is the stomach all the way up past the breasts. The lion, Leo. So Leos have a true love for pleasure, <laughs> right? Pleasure in life, small or big. They like to, <laughs> okay, let me know if this is you, okay? So pleasure for, true love for pleasure in life, small or big, and they rule their own kingdoms, but they do thrive on attention. <laughs> so the reason why is because your area is the spine. So the spine and the back. So that actual going right up to the shoulders, right down, mainly lower back. And I would say mid back to lower back is usually your zone where it can be um, painful. And ruby is your birth stone. But I would also, I know Leos are good for um, carnelian. Um, cancer, I'm still trying to think of the good stones for cancer. It's going to bug me. Um, okay. Ruby is a good one. Carnelian is good for Leo. And citrine. I think citrine was a good one for cancer too, Brett. Yeah. So small body, lower back. That fits, right? Moonstone. It would be good. Good. Yes, moonstone is cancer. I love that. Thank you, Heather, because I actually love that. It is. It's a perfect one. The Virgin, Virgo, always pure. <laughs> they are harvesting information. And when they harvest their information, then they apply them to whatever it is that they're doing. So it's difficult for them to talk to strangers and be relaxed. But sapphire is their birthstone and it's the navel and the stomach area. So the whole belly area. So under the chest to, I would say like three fingers down past the belly button. So navel area and stomach area. Sapphire is really good for them. Um, onyxes are good. I like water sapphire. I usually get them to carry. 
Really? About the stomach? Wow. See that chakra energy. So their water, they definitely should have a gemstone in that area. Yeah, that's their sensitive spot. Isn't this interesting? Oh, my gosh. Okay, Libra. Oh. So Libras have the gift of making people feel important, and they captivate charm. <laughs> the birth zone is opal, and the zones are the lower back and the butt. So we have a butt issue. <laughs> and I always said to my massage therapist, if only you had a hammer, you can just like hammer my butt with it. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> so lower back and butt are our zones. Scorpions. So Scorpio, they are a bundle of energy that actually has to deal with the worst and the best in humans. That's their energy. They're meant to deal with people. And they are ruled by emotions. But they're passionate in everything they do. And topaz is their birthstone. And it's the genital areas that are their zone. So root chakra, genital area is halfway down, right close to the knee. You can almost, when you rub your hands down your knee, you can almost feel the line of where that zone ends, right before the, the knee, okay? So sensitivity. And you know, it's interesting that I do know a group, I don't want to say a group of them, but I know a, a, a few of them that actually deal with like, um, what is it, like bladder infections. I know a whole bunch of scorpions and that has come up, they'll get bladder infections. The centaur, so Sagittarius. And Sagittarius people are supposed to be the most likable person of the Zodiac. That's their reputation. But they get easily through hurt through thoughtless actions or remarks from others. So that is a sensitivity. And when they get, when they are uh, in that place where they're being easily hurt, it's their thighs and hips. So the thighs and the hips are their areas, their tender spots. <laughs> and turquoise is the color, or turquoise is a stone for their birth stone. I know that bloodstone is also a good one for Sagittarius, but thighs and hips. Okay, the goat, Capricorn. We have, they're naturally ambitious. They have been motivated by desire. So whatever it is their desire, whether it's status, position, money, something career-wise, you know, that family, they have a vision. And their spot is the knees. So knees are their weakness and garnet is their birthstone. So they gotta watch their knees. Okay, Aquarius, the water bearer. So they have been, they're original and they do not follow the crowd. My son's Aquarius, so. They are independent thinkers, but they are very meaningful and they have important ambitions, but it's their ankles and calves that are the weak zones. So if Aquarius have sore ankles and calves by the end of their day, they need more energy. And their birthstone is amethyst. The fish, Pisces. So Pisces is the last zodiac sign, which is the center of reincarnation, spiritual rebirth and eternity. 
So the very first, like a lot of people think Aquarius is the first sign, but it's actually not. The first sign is Aries. That's why I like to do this class this time. And the last sign is Pisces. And this is when the time of reincarnation and spiritual birth and connecting to whatever eternity power is in play. But the Pisces are capable of looking into the human psyche. So they are, they're good for like intuitive work. But it's their feet that are the zone. And aquamarine is their birthstone. So their feet is actually their sensitive spot. Pretty interesting, hey? So let's go into, uh, let's see. Let's go back into the houses. So uh, how can we do this? Okay, I hope you have notes. Mm, how do I do this? I got more on the houses I want to do. Okay, so let's go back to the houses. <laughs> the first house. So these are characteristics of the house. Okay. So now we know that our astrological chart has 12, it looks like a wheel, and it's divided into 12 equal parts. And each one of these equal parts is called a house. And each house indicates a particular life aspect where actions have to be performed. So here we're getting into the divination part of it. So back to the houses, one to 12. <laughs> so the first house. So the first house is more on self and appearance. So it's yourself and how you look out into the world. And it involves, I'm trying to find the right words, it involves how impulsive a person is and how they initiate things. So it's their self, their appearance, and their impulsiveness, and how they go about that. So the first house is based on, I would like to say, ego, right? And how we are to appear. The second house refers to possessions and earnings. So this house specifies how people spend and how they gain their money. So how do you spend it? How do you get it back? And that's the window that you can look at. So our attitude to material and wealth possessions as well as the potential to accumulate things are in that house. So what planets were in the second house when you were born? And that will explain how you feel about your wealth and materialism. Is that interesting? And you guys are like, I can't wait to see my chart. <laughs> okay, the third house, that's how you'll be able to see it. You'll have your charts. Okay. None of them have their chart. I said they get a free chart. So you get a free <laughs> chart. Okay. So the third, where was I? Third house. So the third house is relatives. So the communication that we extend to our immediate environment as family, whether we're parents, siblings, a neighbor, or the short journeys that we take to the grocery store, right? As well as mainly our siblings. So remember family, the relatives, and our communication connection. 
so that you might find in your relative house what planets were in there. And then you'll know why you may feel closer to some relatives than others, right? What house does your hubby fit in? <laughs> and you'll be able to look at those things. Okay, so the fourth house is home. And the things that we integrate it or into it for pers our personal foundation. So it's our land, it's our roots, it's our family, how we see life should be, our personal foundation. And remember that fourth house has the ancestors influence in it. So some of you that are in the tarot course, might see fourth house the emperor ah right so there's some ahas with astrology um the fifth house is about yourself and how to enjoy yourself so it's about yourself and how to enjoy yourself and to enjoy your life it's all about you that fifth house the sixth house. So then you get to see what planets were in your fifth house. And those are the things that you'll be like, no wonder I like that. The sixth house involves the work, the work, jobs, the quality that's performed, as well as what is opposed to the actual career that's represented by the 10th house. So the sixth and the 10th are connected. The seventh house represents one-on-one -on -one relationships. So this can be our marriage. It can be a business partner contracts. So if you're doing a contract with someone, you wanna make sure that you have the right energy in that seventh house. It also represents dealing with enemies. Uh-huh. Light that <laughs> jinx remover candle, right? As well as separation, divorce, and quarrels. So when you know, okay, seventh house is in power, I'm not even going to get into a fight right now because it will go bad. <laughs> okay. So seventh house represents all of those. One-on-one -on -one relationships, enemies, separation, divorce, fights, lawsuits, right? Contracts, all of it. Business partners. Oh. So the eighth house is usually a misunderstood one when it comes to astrology, because it's all about healing and transformation. And eight, I always remember the eight, like the infinity symbol on its side. So that's how I, wow, my finger looks so cool. So the eighth house, I always remember healing and transformation, power of infinity, right? So it rules the things and the process where we can get more powerful to transform. And that is one of my favorites. So if you're like me, put a big star by it. Because that's where you can get more powerful when you tap into the power of the eighth house. The ninth house, this involves the experience that you will encounter or the person you're doing a chart for will encounter while searching for different meanings of things. <laughs> so you can actually look at somebody's ninth house and know exactly what it is they're searching for. What, what meaning are they looking for? And is it within a partner, career? It's pretty interesting. So that's kind of like a hidden thing, right? Think, what are you going to encounter? The 10th house, and then it tells you the topic. So the ninth house can always be different, okay? Well, they're always different. I don't even know why I came out of my mouth. Just, just Okay, 10th house. <sighs> so the 10th house aims for success. 
and social status and honor. And this greatly influences our career. Remember I said the sixth house is connected to the 10th house. So this influences our career as well as our public reputation. So that is important. So the quality of our job in the sixth house, the, the performance, what our actual career is, and the success for the social status and honor. And the great influences our career has for our public or our reputation. And you know, that's huge. Like I firmly believe in word of mouth. I don't, I don't advertise. I don't believe in it. Um, 11th house. Let's see. Was I at the 10th? Oh yeah, 11th house. It's all about regulation. So this is the responsible house, the one, one, right? And it's like, hmm, you'd think it would be something a little exciting, but it's regulation, responsibility, and self-realization. So sometimes, remember one, one, if you just see the number 11, not 11, 11, it actually means self-realization. What were you just thinking about? Because that was enlightenment. You're on it. That topic is empower. So the 11th house, it also has to do with our liberty. So whatever we are working on to set ourselves free, the 11th house is good. And it's also, um, it's so weird. I just had the major deja vu saying this. So weird. But it's supposed to happen today, I guess. But legislation and government, right? 11th house the, is also influencing that. So other world stuff. Now the 12th house. The 12th house is one of my favorites because remember I said it's the hidden world. Well, the 12th house is about the higher self, the hidden self, the hidden self that exists apart, not with, apart from our physical reality. So this house involves the things that can take people away from their daily life, their secrets, right? Their self-sacrifice, hidden enemies, how to like find their place, anything. That's the power of our higher self is in the 12th house. So whenever the 12th house comes in, you know that you can tap into those energies. So let's see, we're going to move on to the various tools. So there are various tools that are typically used in astrology. And some of these tools are widely used um, they are connected. You'll see that I mentioned tarot. So they're widely used today. The astrology systems, but also the tarot system. And I know this isn't a tarot class, but if you will observe the psychics while they're doing their job and we're doing our readings, you'll see that a lot of the tarot cards or the crystal ball is something that we can tap into. Astrological influences. That beam of light during that power can bring us the ability to see things. And it's pretty interesting. Ah. Don't you love that thought of like the beam of light coming to earth when you were born? Like, I love that. It's so like superpower. <laughs> I'm all about the superpower and the demigods. <sighs> like if only everybody knew how fabulous they were. Okay. So let's go into the different things. Ah, uh, let's see. So let's look at the crystal ball, right? The crystal ball's image was always like, 
stunned. And it's just like a psychic tool. However, most astrologers use it. And they found that it's very helpful. And throughout the previous decades, it's actually been recognized that a crystal ball is a serious and an effective tool used in astrology. You're like, how? I'm not telling you yet. <laughs> Tarot cards are also used by most astrologers. And these are also recognized as a popular choice for most fortune tellers. And there are various designs and styles to choose from, but most astrologers use them and they'll settle on a particular design that they feel comfortable with. And then in this way, they're able to learn the proper way of interpreting the astrological images and patterns and how they come up. So crystals are classified as one of the other tools, crystals and gemstones, that can be helpful in astrology. And astrologers or psychics will channel the spirit world over the energies of these crystals. So we can use crystals to invoke and help us with the power that we're channeling in. So you'll find some astrologers will be engaged in using tea leaves and some will use a crystal ball and others will use tarot and some will use something as a psychic energy. So it is good to have something that you feel will empower you and invoke a psychic energy when you're figuring these things out. Even a crystal, when you're drawing your charts, put a crystal in the center. Okay, once again, let's go into it. Um, so when it comes to astrology, we're reading patterns, right? That's what it's all about, this map we're seeing and creating and putting together what those meanings are. So all of these interpretations can have like a million different combinations. And there are some who use these items and they have the same effect and the same meaning. But as you develop and as you grow and do people's charts and combinations come together, your intuitive pathway is going to like kick in. And then you'll be like, wow, like that matches with these stones or You'll toss a, a rune and it'll confirm with what you have on your chart. So we can use different tools to connect between these energies that we're bringing into our charts. So some of these tools used in astrology aren't necessary. Some are more unusual or personal to a particular astrologer. And that's okay. There's no rules. But it can be something that helps us and gets us into a place where we can go into that focus for a longer period of time. It allows us to concentrate and channel the psychic energy that we need. And then that's when everything starts to come together. We all of a sudden tap into a possibility and a power as us as an astrologer gains concentration and makes the connection that's taking place with the spirit world. So it's not just, you know, looking at a map and pulling this about, you start getting ideas, right? The spiritual work is as you're putting a report together and looking at the chart, your psychic channel starts to go off. And that's where we can use this as a divination. So there's times that a fortune teller can use this energy to create something that's sentimental, that's coming for our customers, or we can look at the things that are coming right now. We can look at things in the moment, and we can look at things in the next two years, 10 years, 12 years, and you'll learn how to do that. 
So the most valuable of all tools that's used in astrology is the combination of knowledge, as well as the skills that we possess. And our tool, our ability is just like a crystal ball. It's just like the tarot. As we connect to the power of astrology, those powers come through. And that's what creates the most effective way to help us to concentrate and to gain the results that we want, whether we're creating a chart for ourselves, someone else, or creating future plans, right? Ah, so astrology is covered with so much mystery. And you'll find that there are various stories that are talking about it. So, you know, this month, or not this month, until we meet again, I'm always thinking I have monthly courses, but until we meet again, Google astrology, Google your sign, right? Like do some research on it and see what's right for you and what isn't, okay? And there's so many different ways to connect to astrology. There's different cultures, right? But what it is, is it's your story. And you'll be able to find your story and help yourself. So when we can share different stories about the energies that are related to astrology, we can create something for each season, each person. You know, it was a tradition. Everyone in my family gets their report. Someone has a baby, they get their report. Um, and it's something that I like to do. It's something that I feel is personal. And once you learn how to do this, you can be doing this when you're 80, you know, sitting there, 80 years old, doing this astrology report for someone, right? I always think about what are the skills that I can do when I'm an old lady, you know, traveling the world. Well, I can do tarot wherever I am, right? You can do tea leaves, right? So having some kind of skill like this, learning this, you're always going to learn and develop. Every time I do a forecast, it's like I get enlightened. So it is amazing just knowing the astrology every day, but also how you're influenced in it. So this is about your story and your story is not there to entertain you, but it's there to guide you and to help you express something. And that something is something mysterious. So the astrological report is actually meant to convey guidance and messages that can be mysterious at certain times or certain points of our life. But each one of these stories that represent you are also your story and represent to the planet. So, folk stories. Okay, let me see. Hmm. So when it comes to astrology, moon is pertaining to a certain type of personality. Okay? It is the multi- um, faucetted one person who is acting differently at home, but is professional when they go to work. Right? We can all we can all relate to that, I think. Or we have to be prepared for the different situations that we might have to endure at any moment. So an astrologer can tell you more about it. The moon acts as a representation of the collective awareness that the human mind has. It means that an obsessed mind does not pay attention to insight. Is that right? So as soon as I'm obsessed, 
about something, I just like, to me, it's my number one rule. Okay, I gotta deal with it. Otherwise, it's like obsession and it won't go away. <laughs> now you're all like, she's nuts. Yeah, I could be. <laughs> I told that. So think about that, right? So the moon is the representation of the collective awareness of the human mind. And it means that an obsessed mind does not pay attention to insight. So usually the mind attempts to exact compassion from others, such as those people who have been influenced by darker things, right? Or dark nights. So we will learn that there are more folk stories that talk about um, a particular component of astrology. And as you try to learn and get more information about astrology, you're going to find that there are 27 constellations. All 27 constellations are known as, okay, the 27 wives, even though I would say the goddess is the moon, okay, but this is ancient, so I can't, right? But astrology, you'll find that there are 27 constellations, which represent 27 wives that the moon has. And you'll also learn that there are two four nights. And the first one is the so-called one bright. While the other one is dark. So the moon owns a particular constellation, and that is called Rohini, R-O-H-I-N-I. -I. So in the ancient days, I talked about the two four nights, right, or the 27 wives, the moon. And then there's two four nights. The first one was one bright. And the one bright was known as, I don't even know if I can say this. Amavasaya. So M-A-V-A-S-Y-A. -A -A, Amavasaya. And the dark one was known as Pornima, P-O-O-R-N-I-M-A. And these happen every month, right? So the dark moon and the bright moon, right? Full moon, new moon. So these moons own a particular constellation and that is called Rohini. And it is dignified in the sign of Taurus. That's where that constellation is located, in the sign of Taurus. Um, so these astrological readings represent signs and guidance from the heavenly bodies, right? That's what astrology was known as. The stars in the sky create the basis of different stories or different people. So we are known as folk tales. That's what they would have called our story of life in the old days. What is your tale? The other significant things in astrology is the lunar solar calendar. And this luni, so L-U-N-I, 
Looney Solar calendar is a 60 year calendar. Sixty years, like that's how long we can foretell each cycle. So it's a sixty-year calendar, and the elements are all part of it. Okay, but these elements are earth, fire, water, wood, and metal, and that's where the Chinese-like astrology starts coming in. Because there are symbols now, like there's the, what are the Chinese astrology? There's like the rat, the tiger, the rabbit. I know I'm a dragon, but in the 60 year calendar, think of that Chinese food restaurant wheel, right? That's got 60 years on that. So one thing I do urge you to do until we meet again is to browse on the web various stories. The one is talk of stories that talk about the sun and the stars. Okay. So you can take a look at the planets, right? So that you can understand more about astrology, but also the folk tales of the past. And as you read some of these stories, you'll see that the world and the universe is covered with mystery that only an astrologer <laughs> can explain. Or, you know, people that are connected to these mysteries behind astrology and the stories. Um, let me see where there's something else I want to go into before we go. Hmm, where is that? Hmm, what was I just talking about? I totally forgot what I was talking about. Full moon, dark moon, Full moon, dark moon. The 27 house, and then your soul. Okay. Did that okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of a worksheet thing I'm going to send you with some exercises for you to try. Let's see, I just want to know what I want to do. We talked about the house, the public. Okay, that's a little more. Mm, I forgot what I wanted to do. We just talked about the dark moon. Okay, so I'm pretty get. Oh yes, okay. Let me see. Um. Okay. So well, let's see what the heavenly bodies in the sky. Not this one. Let's see, Brett's here with me. <sighs> let me just see if I'm missing anything. Oh, my, my heart just stopped. I thought maybe I didn't record any of this. Okay, so what I will want you to do is message me your birthday. So what do I need? I'll message, actually, I'm going to message all of you what I need. And then I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting something. We talked about its de decline, right? And it's okay. Well, let's okay. I know we're coming to an end, but let's talk about some variations of the astrology. And then maybe you can check out some of those. And then we've done the basics. Whoa. Then we did the basics. So let's do that. So there's many different, I was talking about how there's many different variations of astrology. And since it's been developed, it's always been reviving into new ideas and concepts, which I think is awesome. Like there's some pretty amazing astrologists out there. Um, 
So it is coming up with there's new ideas, there's new concepts, there's new energies. And as we evolve as people, so does astrology. But there's lots of different interpretations. And this has to do with um, all of the different regions. So different regions have greatly influenced the totality of astrology and every zodiac system is unique in its characteristics. Um, but most of them have been taken from the ancient civilizations. So that's what I like about it. So let's go into the variations. So there is Indonesian astrology. And Indonesian astrology is and has been developed during the Indonesian ancient civilization, but it's still very popular in the present generation. And it's called Java, like coffee, Javanese horoscope. So check out these different variations and see if you can get anywhere online where they do, you know, sometimes they do free mini charts and stuff. So see if you can find that. Javanese horoscope. And it is uh, a system that is distinguished through a seven day weekly cycle. And uh, so they use the Western seven day weekly cycle and then the Indonesian five day, pet, what is it called? Passaran. So it's a five day Passaran. So they combine their week and our week. <laughs> Confusing. Okay, then there's the African astrology. And the African astrology gets traced back to like the ancient African civilizations. They're when when their African civilization was developed. And its astrology has been based on geomancy. And it is geomancy is a divination form that comprises of bones being thrown randomly. And as a result, arrows and lines are formed. So that's how the African astrology got started. Pretty awesome. Home reading. I knew this. Oh, I can't remember her name. She was like my first, my first bone reader, and she had the bones. And I mean, she looked like she was a real deal. I loved her. Okay, remember her? Mm -hmm. The old Vancouver thing. Okay, Arabic, Arabic astrology. So this is a great astrological form that indicates Arabic characteristics according to the birth date. So their astrology gives insights regarding the merits and the gifts of various signs. They also call it Persian astrology, which is their oldest astrological form. So check out Persian astrology. Tibetan astrology. So Tibetan astrology has been regarded as a part of the five traditional sciences in Tibet. Actually, I really enjoy Tibetan astrology and those five steps. So the Tibetan astrology has been originated around 1,000 years ago, and its roots is connected to other traditions. So there is a combination of knowledge from Chinese, Indian, and the local Bon religions. Burmese astrology and astrology plays a very critical role in the Burmese people. 
And this serves as the person's birth sign basis that they knew their behavior pattern and personality. But the eight zodiac signs of Burmese have their cardinal points. So they have the southwest, the southeast, the northeast, the west, the northeast, the north, the east, and the south. <laughs> anyway, that is part of their behavior patterns and characteristics. So they use the um, directions. Native American astrology. So Native Americans believed in astrology for many centuries. And they actually developed, this is what you want to search, the Earth astrology system. So this year has been divided into 12 zodiac signs, which each named is after an animal. So I am a Libra, my Native American tradition, I am a raven. Uh, Australian astrology. So Australian astrology, astrology has been interactive and reveals animal characteristics of the astro Australians according to their birth date. So similar to the native and the Chinese. And it gives insights regarding the merits and the powers of each sign. Okay, so there is, um, I'm gonna go into the lunar mansions next class. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so let's see, I'm not doing it, do something else, where is that? Ah, yeah, I love it. Like, did you really, when I found out that astrology, wait until you find out how they're all connected and where the powers of the planets and the different gods and all of that starts to come in. It's amazing. Um, just to know that this is a study of thousands of years. Yeah, folk tales of the past. I love it. It is cool. Anything to do with us Googling? Nope. Just take in what you connect with. That's all you want to do is connect to it. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to take you uh, further next class. I want to go into about how um, astrology influences us, like the different gods and the planets and the astrology of their meanings more. So this is a four-part course. Um, I'm going to do your astrology card, the part, do your astrology chart this time. And then when we get into the next class, I think that's when I'll send out a workbook for you to try. So we'll have more information on it, but I have a little workbook I want to do. And yeah, I'm excited. I hope you have some information on yourself and family members, but until next time, which I don't even know when that is. I'll have to look. <laughs> We're going to pull a card. So until now that you've tapped in, just opening the door to astrology, all of these influences are going to be around you. So let's pull a card. What are we attracting until we meet again? The power of astrology. I'm pulling three, body, mind, and spirit. The first one, body. What are we getting? As soon as I choose to see the light in dark corners, I redirect my power to what I want. And that's actually what it is. I think we even talked about that earlier, about seeing the dark in the light corners. I love that. Okay, so that was body. Now we're doing mind. Okay, influence on our minds. I let an inner sense of quiet multiply each day as I strengthen my faith and love of the universe. Okay, I love that. Okay, so next class we'll get into the day. 
so you know what time of the day to practice things. But I think I'll do a little more info. We'll do your charts. Then you're more connected to yourself. And then we'll do the influences after next class and you can try to it. So spirit, what are we attractive? I'm in awe of the magnificent guidance that's available to me. You better be in awe. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. I can't believe it was two hours went by that quick. Either way, I'm excited to take you further. And I'm so happy that you're connecting to yourself. Because as you learn to connect to yourself, you'll also learn the equation and how to create charts for others. So I'm really excited that you get to do you first. <laughs> okay, I'll be messaging all of you for your things I need for your charts and I'll send you a chart within a few days. Okay, okay, have a good night. I'll send you your chart and you get this video tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye.